Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know that my art style generally leans extremely cartoony. Um, so every once in a while, I like to do this little challenge on myself where I just try to draw as realistically as I can. I always use this as a reference. Um, this is just my character in my normal, most cartoony style that I use for my webcomic Unfamiliar. This has been what I've been trying to make realism off of since I started this challenge um, in 2017. Now, the 2017 version looks like this, and honestly, I'm pretty embarrassed. I knew even at the time that it wasn't like very good, but um, I think <laughs> I didn't really even fully understand how far from realism <laughs> this drawing was. I didn't use any references whatsoever when I tried this challenge the first time, um, and I didn't give it a lot of time either, and I think that really shows. My next attempt was in 2019, and I know that this one I really wanted to try and deal with how flat the first one was, um, and also try to deal with some of those facial proportions, which were just like wildly out of um, out of range of what could be considered even close to realism. Um, again, I didn't use a ton of reference. I had a couple pictures, I think, of like some uh, relatively photoshopped, like Instagrammy kind of girls, um, but I didn't really use, use them as reference properly. I kind of just looked at them and was like, okay, now I'm going to paint the portrait. Um, I really wasn't very good at using reference. Um, I was very scared of copying too directly off of reference. It's something that I think I developed a fear of early on in my art career, well before I went to art school. Um, so I, yeah, I didn't really use reference very well either, but I was much more cognizant to trying to create some sort of like actual form where it looks like her, you know, her face has like some sort of three dimensionality. It's still extremely stylized. There's no getting around that, but it's a clear improvement from my first attempt. And lastly, here is my 2020 attempt. Um, honestly, I do think this is the best one so far, though, like personally for my own eyes, I actually prefer the 2019 version. Um, in this version, I really, really, really tried to push, um, again, that like structure of the face. Uh, I didn't use tons of, re of references again. Um, I had them, I had like a mood board of like girls' faces that I thought were kind of similar to how I pictured my character Babs, um, but I didn't really use any of like the lighting or anything. I just kind of glanced at individual parts of their faces and tried to um, notice details and then apply those to my um, portrait. Uh, and then I also did this one in black and white first and then added color over top. I think that gives this a sort of muddy, very moody and sad looking um, overall uh, look. Um, but I do think that it's still far from realism. Um, so this time I wanted to go really classical. And as you can see, I've actually pulled up a picture that I took of myself. Please don't make fun of me. This is just a reference picture. It's not supposed to look particularly good. Um, but I tried to set up my lighting so that it would be more interesting and show the planes of my face so that I could copy those planes um, and also copy the colors. This was a huge thing. This is the first time I've ever tried to do this on this challenge where I really wanted the skin tone to look as like varied and complex as it is in a real person's face. So I started actually using the eyedropper tool to sample the shadows in the various parts of my face um, so that it could be closer to a real skin tone for my purchase of, of Babs. Um, now, unfortunately, I don't still have my blunt bangs cut across the front, so I had to do some guessing on how the lighting would work on those. But overall, I had a pretty good um, sort of template for how light should work in this portrait. Now, again, I don't picture my face as looking like Babs. Babs in my comic is supposed to be a um, unusually beautiful character, um, and I would have to be a total egomaniac to like face cast myself as this character, um, but I really did want to use my own picture um, because uh, I feel weird. I would feel weird about like taking some random person who I don't know is like Instagram photo and, and ripping off of that. And also I really wanted some more dramatic lighting. Um, so I, the best way I could do it is set it up myself. So basically the way that I approached this was completely different than the uh, other times that I've tried to do this challenge. Um, like I said, I'm eyedroppering the colors and I'm trying to just look at specific planes of my face. Like every little part um, that has like sort of a strong shadow 
I'm trying to look at it in, in these like shapes, these sort of geometric shapes. It almost has a very interesting, different like stylized look than, um, than uh, anything I've ever really done before. Cause usually I think about things very like oriented towards like lines, you know, I love line art. I'm a cartoonist. I like black line art that just, you know, <laughs> it's kind of drawing around the edges of these shapes. Um, and this is very much focused on like, you know, try, trying to think about things as these big blocks that I don't usually think about. Um, so basically my original plan was to do this like very geometrical um, blocking out of the light forms on the face um, and then to like smooth them all over and shade them all in. But I realized as soon as I started like blending everything together and making it look really soft, it actually looked really strange. Um, and I actually liked some of this like blockiness. Um, now it's important to realize that uh, I am not going for hyper-realism, which is actually a different style than realism. Uh, realism is more in line with like uh, portraits of, you know, like kings and stuff. Um, a lot of a lot of portraits that people tried to make where they're not like it's not like you can see every pore. Um, hyper-realism is trying to make you see stuff that even your your naked eye wouldn't normally see at that distance, you know. So I suppose all I should really aim for is improvement from last year because that's been what's carried me through this challenge so far. Um, I really didn't copy off my like face proportions as much. I tried to break away from them because as I said, I'm not trying to do a self portrait. I really want to do my best to make sure that this does look a little more like my character. It's kind of tricky because I do have freckles and pink hair and you know, uh, there's a lot of similarities, but um, I want her face to clearly have a different sort of sculpt, I guess, to mine. Um, so her eyes are a bit bigger. I changed her nose around um, and I actually changed like her gaze like in in the original um, idea I had I wanted her looking more up so that's why I took a picture looking up but um, I actually wanted her to look more towards the camera as I started to paint it so um, generally I actually just like dropped the whole um, perspective of the face uh, it's looking a little bit more down um, I also thought this might help me sort of morph the proportions a little bit um, so it makes her uh, eyes look bigger because if you know my eyes look bigger in this picture because I'm looking up, but as I've dropped her gaze, now it just looks like her eyes are, are naturally bigger than mine. Um, that's kind of something I, I thought I would try. I don't know if that's like a good tactic or anything, um, but it's definitely something I, I gave a shot to. Um, I really like the lighting in this just because I did have two different light sources. I had natural light on the one side and um, I had my like pinkish Himalayan salt lamp on the other. That was my whole goal was to create this like more interesting, deeper lighting. Um, um, that's another problem with using a lot of like Instagram pictures because the most flattering type of light usually is light that's like very even. That's why people use like ring lights um, and it sort of flattens down your face and makes mostly just like your eyes pop out. Um, so when you do this more dramatic lighting, it's a lot harsher on your face. Um, it can pick up things in your skin and stuff that you don't want necessarily. Um, but for portraits, it's really great um, because it's really showing you all of those little angles. So that's what I tried to focus on here. Um, I I also closed her mouth. My mouth is like a little bit open in the uh, image, but I wanted to uh, just make her have more of a, <laughs> less of a vacant expression than the one that I'm doing. Um, and honestly, by the time I got to her like outfit, I was just sort of like throwing down blocky stuff. Again, I really like doing the like, um, the sergeant kind of type of portraiture where you put all the detail in the face and then everything else sort of fades out a little bit. I think that that looks the coolest and it also allows me to focus on the thing that I like to paint the most, which is the face. Also at this point, I'd been working on this for over an hour. I think it was like an hour and 30 minutes by the time I was all um, said and done. Uh, and I just really couldn't stand to look at it anymore. I'm used to the turnaround on my art being so much faster than this, or at least having lots of different like sittings. Um, but this one I had to do all in one go and I was just getting worn out. <laughs> um, so I really feel like I, I do feel like I improved overall, I will say, um, from my last one, but I think we have, <laughs> we have gotten closer to realism to the point where we're now sinking directly into the uncanny valley. There's something about looking at her eyes 
Um, that just makes me feel a little creeped out. She kind of looks like a robot or something. Um, so while I do feel relatively encouraged that I think I have improved and I, I know how to use references a little bit better um, and not be so you know scared of, of them, um, I do think that until next year's attempt, we're not going to get to a point where it looks like a nice portrait because she looks a little terrifying. I tried to improve this also um, right after the recording stopped by just doing a little light editing. So here is the final painted version and the final edited version side by side and then here are all the versions together. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle through this challenge and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much to my wonderful patrons, including Neurocherry, Sunshine, Weekly Meat, Kelly Halsey, Kubaroshi, Moon Milk, Alana the Artist, Rylan Parker, Rylan, Kadaria, Something Super, Deadly Nightshade Art, Maria Vasquez, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Alilia Lur, The Espressive Poker Face, Morrissey Axolotl, Chris Draws, Kai Kisser, Subaki, The Becky, Liliana Hammondtree, Yav Lavali, Angel File, Cutie Pie, Ruined Rain Crow, <laughs> Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Lion, Valeria Louie, Nora Cornelson, Kola, Rachel Singh, Yavoy SD, JJ Jade, and of course, Lipa Lipa Blah.